decorating my booth for the holidays, I like to add a mixture of Christmas decor, home decor, thrifted items, and things that are useful in your home. Sometimes the thrifted items need a little zhuzhing up. A little paint, some decoupage paper, even repurposing some trash to treasure items into beautiful, sophisticated decor. In this video, I'll show you some easy DIY techniques that you can use on the thrift flips and trash items to create a beautiful home. This thrifted tray had pretty fantastic bones. I love the shape of it, the square shape. Usually you only find rectangle shapes. And I really liked the handles on the side and the really nice big frame look around the edges of it. This was $6 at Goodwill and when I flipped it over and looked at the tag, it originally was $19.99 at I think Walmart is where the tag said it was from. So that's pretty cool. So the first thing that I did was, of course, took those all those stickers off and gave it a good clean because it was dirty. I gave it two coats of Folk Art uh, One Paint. This is a paint and sealer in one, so I thought this would be great. Once I did the two coats on it, it was all sealed and just fine and ready to have the decoupage paper put on. So once that was dry, I grabbed my paper. I love this beautiful black sheep with the daisies on it. And I thought this would look beautiful in this tray. I got this at Zazzle.com. So I will put a link down in the description to this paper. Uh, it's beautiful. And I think I have a couple more of them. And I can't wait to use them on a project. I'm not sure what, but I just love the black sheep. I think it's just beautiful. So now I'm using my water pen to go around it so that I can get it to tear really nicely and I wanna make sure that it's gonna fit in my tray and I want it to give it kind of a, a nice organic look and not just be straight lines. So I just use that to wet the paper and then I can tear it really easily. Once I got it the way I liked it, I'm going to take my Mod Podge and add it to my tray. Now, as you can see, I did not paint the bottom of this a lighter color. Typically, you would if you want your paper to pop. I want this to be a dark and moody tray and really doesn't lose too much of the color going on the dark paint of this tray. So I'm not too worried. So I'm just going to cover the whole bottom where I'm, my paper is going to be and then add my paper. I really should have used a piece of saran wrap or a baggie to make sure that my wrinkles and my paper was all down. Because I don't know if you can see, but in the top right over the sheep, I got a little bit of a rip. And that's because I overworked the paper with my hand. I really shouldn't have done that and I uh, kind of regret doing that, but it's okay. It's a distressed primitive piece, so that's okay. I'm gonna go back and hit it with some sandpaper later on anyways, and kind of tone it down a little bit. So it's, it's not gonna be too bad. I'm gonna take a little bit of paint and go around the outside and cover up where the Mod Podge came through on the edges. I don't want that different color to to show the Mod Podge will give it like a weird um, uh, a weird color than the rest of the tray and I want it to all match. So I just went around it with some more black paint to cover up the Mod Podge. Then I go around it with a little bit of my Rub and Buff Antique Gold 
and I'm going to just do it on the handles and around the edges. I did a little bit on the paper as well, and now I'm going over it with a little bit of antique wax. This is after I sanded it a little bit, and I want to get that wax in some of the sanding spots where it went down to the paper, and also around the edges to give it a little bit of a, a darker hue to kind of look more antiqued. something that I just received from the singing garden they're solar lights and if some of you didn't know we live off grid so anything that I can find that's solar I love to use because it helps us conserve power here and uh, you know it's just they're just pretty to have outside or anywhere actually so I wanted to share these with you because they're so pretty and I thought that you guys would enjoy them so I just got these in the mail they are a two pack from Singing Garden. I'll have a link down in the description to Amazon with a discount code so you guys can go down and purchase these if you're interested. They have a solar light on the a solar panel on the top so that the sun can shine in there and charge the battery that's in there. And then at nighttime, during the day, and then at night, look at that. It lights up. You probably can't see it very well, but I'm gonna put some pictures in here, some video. You guys are going to see what it looks like. So I think these are beautiful. These are owl lights. They're, this one is the sitting owl, so it's sitting on a branch. And again, I'll have close-up pictures if these aren't very good. And then this one is a flying owl. So on the ground, when you have these on at night, they will shine and you can see the owls and it lights up a pathway quite big. From what I read, it's about five, four or five feet around. So that's quite big and it will light up a nice pathway really, really well. They're beautiful, rounded, metal, lightweight lanterns. They have solar panels on the top, so they're solar powered. They charge during the day, the sun will charge the top. And then at night, they come on automatically, they stay on all night long, and once the sun comes back up, they'll go out and charge again for the next night. These are great for your patio, your lawn, around your fire pit, uh, pathways, they're great for a gift. Uh, hanging, I think they're wonderful. They'll be great for four or five feet around the lantern, so they'll light up that much. They can even be, even be great for table lamps, pathway lights, your garden, or even camping. When you go camping, let the kids use them to light up their tent or around their tent so they don't trip on those wires. Such a great idea. These are great for any time of year for gift giving. Christmas, housewarming, Thanksgiving, hostess gifts, Mother Valentine's Day, birthdays, someone hard to buy for. It would These would be really, really nice or just because, you can give them just because you wanna show your appreciation to somebody. So these are just beautiful lights. They're uh, water and weather resistant. They're very decorative and like I said, they're metal. So they're really durable. They give off eight lumens of light. I think they're really fun. They have an on and off automatic function. So they're energy saving, which is really cool. I think the value for the money is really, really nice. I'll leave that link down in the description with the discount code and make sure you check out their store on Amazon. They have so many cool looking lanterns on there. I know you're going to find one that you love. So what I want to do is take a piece of scrap wood that I have kicking around and a couple of these pieces of silverware that kind of sort of match. These two forks kind of match. The I like the design on them. They look about the same and I'm going to bend them so I can make some hooks and put them on this piece of wood. 
I'm gonna sand this down and get it all looking nice. But I think I can do this without even heating these up and they're gonna look pretty cool, I think, as hooks on these just scrap pieces of wood. I found the silverware that I showed you at the free area at my dump. I picked them up and wasn't sure what I was gonna do with them, but I knew that they would be handy. Somebody did the hard work for me and flattened them all nice and flat. So I didn't have to worry about that, but I do need to find a way to bend them. So first I'm gonna take this piece of wood and I just showed you I had it on my sander, sanded and rounded the edges. And then I took a lighter grit sandpaper and just sanded it smooth so that it was really nice and silky to the touch. I'm then gonna use a vise and put the silverware in it and just bend it where I want it or want the hooks to be and it worked fairly good. There was a few of them that were a little bit stubborn uh, because I think they were probably thicker or different kind of uh, material that the silverware is made out of, I guess, but it worked out pretty well. So I just bent them down and then I had to drill a hole and uh, get a spot for them to be uh, screwed into the wood. So that worked out pretty well. So once I get it bent with the vise, I then just used my fingers to kind of make sure I got that bend where I wanted it. And then, like I said, some of them were a little bit more difficult, so I stuck them in the vise and used the vise to kind of bend them the, at the position that I wanted. I painted my board black because I thought the silverware would look best popping right off that black paint. And now I'm just gonna take some light grit sandpaper and distress the edges, of course. It's gotta look more prim and distressed and aged. So I did that and then I went back with my silverware and was trying to figure out exactly where I wanted it placed on the board. I then screwed the hole down or drilled a hole down through it. I only wish on these that I had made the screw holes down lower instead of right in the middle of the, I don't know what the heck I was thinking with putting the hole right in the middle, but um, that's what I did. I'm gonna finish these off camera and start on the bigger one that I wanna do. All right, I got it all sanded down, painted it black and scuffed it up. I am gonna take these pieces once I get upstairs, because I don't have it down here, and throw some antique wax on these. But I'll do that once I get upstairs with them. This is still drying a little bit right there, but I'm okay with that. I want to get this done, so I don't want to wait. So I'm going to figure out where I want this. I want it down near the bottom because I'm thinking I may decorate the top with greenery and stuff. So I want to, let's see, I've got two that look the same, two that are, two pairs that are the same and two that are the same. Okay, here we go. There we go. That looks so cool. So now I'm going to finish the other one Get that done and then we can go upstairs like i said i want to antique wax these boards all the hangers that i have where are my other ones i took them upstairs okay so i'll show you when i get upstairs the other ones i'm going to now add some antique wax to the wood i really should have done this before i put the silverware on and i could take them off put the wax on wipe it back and then put the silverware back on but really uh it wiped right off the silverware if i got it on there and Hey, if I got a little bit of antique wax on there, I was okay with that too because, again, it would age it, but it really wiped right, right off it, so I wasn't too worried. I did end up using the long board, the second. So I did two small ones. Let me start again. <laughs> I did two small ones, these that you see here, and then I did two longer ones for my rolling pins. One of them I already put the silverware on. This one I did not, so I did end up, before I put the silverware on, using the antique wax. And I wanted you to see how awesome it looks. 
Now we're going to go ahead and work on the rolling pin. I'm going to add some of this Dixie Belle paint. This is the pine cone paint. This is a beautiful brown color. It's a very primitive color. I've noticed that a lot of the primitive websites that I look at when you look at prim furniture, they're coming out with this color saying that it's the new prim color. Um, yeah, uh, I totally love it. It's it's great color. And I did my just my handles that, that color. So it's going to look really good. I have the crockery stamps here from IOD and I ink them up and I'm going to take my rolling pin once I've sanded it down to give it a nice smooth feel. I'm going to just roll it on to the stamps without even removing them. We're just going to just roll it right over there and see what we get and I think it came out okay. I did move just a little bit with one of them when I first put it on so it kind of looks like it's a double stamp but not too too bad and I really like how this came out. It's going to take a while to dry because I used ink, but that's all right. We'll let it dry overnight. I'll do the second one the same way, and it's going to look really good. I did take a little bit of black paint and went around the edges of the handle just to give it a more of a distressed look, an aged look, instead of sanding it, trying to sand it back. Once it's dry, these both dried overnight, I'm going to use my fusion hemp oil and I'm just going to oil up the middle parts. I think I did do the handles too, just, just because why not? Um, and I, I love how, if you can see the difference here, how it brings out that wood and makes it look so nice. So I think this looked really good as, as opposed to using antique wax on it or something like that. I think this came out really nice. Once those were dry, I went in with some greenery and glued that on to the top above the rolling pin and a little piece of vintage lace. And this is so simple and sophisticated. I love this, this look for a prim kitchen. This Lazy Susan is going to go into my useful but beautiful category. I love the look of it just in the wood, but it never sells. When I try to put just wood things in my booth, they never sell. So we're going to paint it. Since I had the pine cone paint out, we're going to use that Dixie Belle pine cone paint and give it two coats all over of that after I cleaned it. And this is so simple. So once I got the two coats on there, I'm going to go back with a little bit of black paint because I had it on my brush anyway. And again, normally I would spray it underneath, spray it black and then sand back. But because I have the paintbrush already, we're just going to give it the look with that. This wood charger plate from Hobby Lobby is a project that I had started a long time ago. I didn't like what was on it, so I sanded it all down, and I'm going to do something different with it today. So I have these wooden spoons that I picked up probably from the free area at the dump, and they had little, I don't know, reindeer on them or snowmen or Santas, or there was something Christmassy on them. Uh, but they were pretty much missing most of the pieces to it. And there was just a bunch of glue and a few fuzzies that were stuck on them. So just using my heat tool and uh, pulling that off once the glue was heated up, that worked really well. 
I also went back in with some sandpaper and sanded it down. Just got rid of some of the ridges and the rough spots on the, on the spoons. And then they were all ready to be painted. I'm going to take some of my DWIL wood paint in the color cardamom green, I believe it is. And I'll leave a link to that paint down in the description. I really like this paint. It works really well. It covers well. And uh, I like for as much paint as you get, I like the cost of it. Um, and typically I can get it for free shipping. So usually if you buy enough. I mean, I do enough projects so I can. So I'm just going to do two coats of this green all over this charger plate. And then I'm going to go in with some petroleum jelly, Vaseline, just some whatever, run of the mill, whatever you got. Now this is a resist for the next layer of paint that I'm going to put on, which you can see there. It's the uh, Folk Art One paint, which is the paint and sealer in one. So I'm just going to put the... Uh, petroleum jelly on to resist some of this black paint it just gives it uh it's a different way to sand it down or to distress it so you don't have to sand it so i'm just going to give this two coats of the black paint over the top of the green and then once it's dry i'll go back in and wipe it back now is a good time if you haven't already and you're enjoying the content to hit that subscribe button and then the bell next to it if you ring that bell, that lets YouTube know to let you know anytime I upload a video. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these projects. After my plate dries, I'm going to go back with a rag and just wipe off the paint that's around the edges where I added that petroleum jelly. Did take a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of hard rubbing on some spots to get down there because that does have a sealer in it. It normally wouldn't be that difficult if you didn't use one with a sealer. So that gave it a really cool distress. And now I'm going to go in and paint the spoons that are going to go with it. And they're going to be the same, but I'm going to paint them differently, so or the opposite. So I'm just painting the black first, and I'm going to do one coat of black on all three spoons. I will add my petroleum jelly on the spots where I want that paint to resist and I want it to wipe off. And then I'm going to go over it with the green on top instead of the other, instead of the plate where I had the black on top. Then once I get those done and they're dry, I'm going to go in and wipe them back. And as you can see, it gives it a really cool distressed look. Now you could go in with some antique wax as well and really, really give these a nice uh, antique look, but I didn't want to do that with this one. I decided I was just going to use them the way they were. So now I'm going to glue them onto the plate. So I'm just going to use some hot glue and place them down in the middle in kind of like a, I guess, a pyramid way. I'm going to put the two down and then the one on top, and uh, then I'm going to decorate around them. I picked some greenery out of my stash. This is called parsley, I believe. And I just pulled off some pieces that I wanted to use. So I'm gonna use four pieces of this and just kind of layer them over the top of my spoons. And then I have some little bit of a darker hue, a darker green that I wanna use with a little bit bigger leaves. And I'm gonna add those in as well. I'm gonna do some on top and then some down underneath. And we're just gonna hot glue them on until I'm happy with how it looks. Once I got all the greenery on that I wanted, I took some black and tan homespun material and I'm gonna add that to the top of my spoons and over the top of my greenery. I think that looks like a really nice contrast with the green and the black and everything together. I think it looks very nice. So then I'm gonna take this stamp 1879. This is from one of the IOD packs and I can't remember right now while I'm doing this which one it's called, it's like a farmhouse one or something. Um, I'll try and put it down at the bottom if I can remember what it is. And I stamped it on a card and I'm just gonna, I don't typically do like little 
tags and things like that but I thought this one needed something else and I thought a little bit more brown would look really nice in with this green so I did that the next thing once I got this situated the way I wanted it was I should have done this before I put all the greenery and the tag on but I took some paint I took some green paint I took some off white paint and I took some black paint on the spoons and just opposite paints of whatever was on there and I'm just tapping splotches I'm just just tapping paint all over the the plate so I think that gives it a really cool different look I hope you enjoyed my projects today let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite and which one it was check out those links down in the description especially those lanterns they are so pretty you won't regret it don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.